Hello, welcome to another video and today I'm going to show you uh, a very favourite exercise of mine um, for helping people to learn how to do the squat and the deadlift. Um, also sort of helps the person who lacks strength in the squat, um, you know, because to be honest the deadlift probably harder to learn at first but easier to get once you've once you've got it um, where the squat takes a little bit longer so this is sort of the what is known as the goblet squat or a dumbbell squat but um, and what I'm going to show you is how you can sort of progress it to be go from being a basic squat and then when I stand up and, I'm, and I'll explain while I'm using heel plates in a second um, and then when I stand up I now have to use a deadlift pattern to pick it up. Can you sort of see the difference here? So if I break this down, so if we, firstly with the deadlift, now I, um, the reason I'm using heel lifts here is because most people struggle with the squat. I actually find it easy but I wanted to sort of show um, how it sort of can help you with getting the squat right. But the main thing to understand is with the deadlift, the sh you want to keep the shins pretty vertical, all right, and then the little curve in your back is got to, in your lumbar spine, has got to be there. So you're basically having to really stick your butt out a bit backwards. So all your strength's being derived from the hamstrings and glutes. All right, so so just quick summary of that. Try it. You got to make sure that the shin stays vertical. All right, that that and that, and possibly also keeping your head looking down. All right, because it's the other thing. A lot of people tilt their head up and look straight ahead, but if, I'm, if I want to just narrow it down to the main things, it's the it's trying to sort of get this part right and this part. All right. Now, once we go, we pick it up. All right. So I pick it up. The the weight of the deadlift is part is pretty easy. All right. Because I really would need like five times that dumbbell to really be a challenge on the deadlift. But on the squat, this weight might be enough for most people. To be honest, even body weight is enough for most people. All right. So when I come down in the squat. Now, I'd probably come a little bit too low here. I probably would have been better about there. And you can tell, you can just see how my butt rolls under a little bit. All right, but if I, most people are probably going to stop about there. And that's where the heel lifts come into it, all right, because they, that just gives the ankle a little bit better chance to get the flexion that it needs. Because most people will still have that same sort of vertical shin that we saw with the deadlift, all right? Now I don't want that vertical shin. I actually want to encourage the knee to come forward. I, I actually want this now. So you can see the big difference between the two movements. And what I'm looking for is to, that the shin and the and the spine sort of parallel to each other. All right. Now, because you're everyone is stronger on the down face, which is the eccentric face. So if I just come back, so you're 30% stronger on this phase of the squat. All right. So. If that's the case, then I can load it up and you've got a better chance of doing it right. But to come back up out of it is much more difficult. So that's where I unload the squat. And before I just bounce up out of it, I, what I try to get people to do is to learn how to position really well. And you see how right that last bit there, if I just sort of rock it back real slow, you'll see how I've, how I've just... Um, adjust my posture by lifting my chest up see that and then that just gives me a much better positioning I possibly might also um, instruct the person to push their knees out which would be activating the glutes into external into abduction all right so I'm demanding more thoracic extension I'm demanding more glute control with abduction all this at all the while the quads are getting absolutely hammered which is exactly what they should happen in a squat anyway. But most people never feel the squat because they're actually sort of using the deadlift position to do their squat. So most people's squat actually looks exactly like a deadlift, especially the person who lacks a lot of strength in, in their quads. Um, so their, their squat actually probably looks a bit more like this. Uh, probably not quite as extreme as that, but, but that's often what we would see is that they keep that vertical shin and they're just sticking their ass out behind them and then they're calling that a squat. It's not a squat. All right. So this is sort of a good, this is a really great way to explain the difference between the two movements because they look so similar, but it's actually an excellent way to develop the strength into the quads with the squat on the easiest phase of the movement. So we're just working from the top down instead of the bottom up. Um, 
and then really learning position here. If I wanted to make it all about the, the strength and the squat, learning good position, and then and then coming up out of it and learning how to use your hips correctly for the, the bending action. All right, so it's a it's a great way to sort of get the best of both worlds. All right, so an excellent excellent exercise to use at home if you're in lockdown. Um, you don't really need a huge weight for this. Um, an excellent way if you've got like a bit of knee pain and you're trying to build some strength in your quads. Um, an excellent exercise for a person with back pain who needs to learn how to bend correctly. So you can sort of see it's a multi-dimensional exercise with very little risk. All right, so um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed that video and it gives you a few ideas on how you can use a simple dumbbell to help your training. All right, we'll see you on our next video.